Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Gerard Toll and this is a brief video introduction to my course Discourse Analysis which is offered in Government International Affairs and Political Science and Urban Affairs and Planning at Virginia Tech in the fall of 2018. In this video introduction I'm just going to talk briefly about the syllabus. You should read the syllabus carefully and I'm going to talk about the texts and give you some sense of uh, what it is that I am looking for uh, from you in this course. Now this course is a completely online class. You will use Canvas as the course delivery system um, and I've offered this course for over a decade and I've refined it every year um, as I have uh, taught it. So the course description outlines why discourse is important and then makes a series of arguments about what discourse analysis is. So it's not a method or an approach but a name for a heterogeneous um, set of traditions, literatures grappling with questions of representation and non-representation meaning, interpretation, affect, in social science. Um, so the emphasis of the course here is on the social science theories behind discourse analysis, uh, more than a toolbox uh, application of these methodologies, although we will look at the ways in which discourse analysis is used in a substantive way. This is a government and international affairs class first and foremost, and so the literatures that we will be engaging are literatures that deal with international politics, that deal with government uh, and the like. Now, discourse analysis is not solely about discourse defined as talk. Um, it is also about uh, the practices that are associated with that. The, the very act of talking is one that involves physical um, force, it involves emotion, it involves a uh, persuasion, uh, and it involves, uh, in many instances, visuality. We read words, but we also listen to someone as you're listening right now. All of those are inputs. So when we talk about discourse analysis, we also need to talk about the affective force of the uh, particular a statement that has been made, the particular speech that has been made, what is being said, uh, whether it's a tweet or whether it is a, a long article. Uh, we have to talk about uh, the sort of affective context within which discourse occurs. Uh, we have to talk about visuality and we also have to talk about uh, gender. Um, so the course is a graduate one, it is an introductory one, but not so introductory. It's not so easy, this class. There's a, a, a level of discipline that is required in order for you to do well in this class. Uh, it is a class that uh, um, the feedback on in the past has been extremely positive, but um, it is one that has been challenging. Uh, for many students. So I get students that say literally this course has changed my life but in the sense of this course has sort of really helped them reformulate how they think about their particular research topic but it requires uh, a lot of commitment and a lot of time organization on your part in order to do well. So you need to grasp what that is about very early in order to, to do well. Uh, you will get feedback on each one of the modules that uh, you submit an assignment on. So it's organized around five different modules and you have to write an assignment, a 1500 word assignment for these modules. You get the assignment uh, as, you, as the module opens and when that module closes, a new module opens and uh, a new assignment is made available and visible to you so you can see that. Um, so um, you need to uh, be well organized uh, and be very clear about the deadlines. And the deadlines are uh, invariably Fridays at 9 a.m. 
in order for you to get the particular assignment to me. Uh, that assignment is 1500 words uh, and it is a very strict limit in terms of that uh, that word limit. Uh, it's one that I've refined down the years and it is to force you to write in a very efficient manner. If you go over it, I will penalize you in your grades. So please grasp that from the outset. So um, the readings, let's talk a little bit about the readings because um, uh, there are a few things that you need to uh, be aware of. So the books that are required for purchase, are uh, Sarah Mills's book, Discourse. Uh, make sure you get the second edition. It's now quite uh, old, it's uh, from 2004, but it's a very good introduction. Uh, and it is one that uh, I have used uh, for quite a while. Now, I also use an even older text, which is now difficult to get, you still can get it, uh, which is David Howarth's book, Discourse. Uh, which was published by the Open University in 2000. Um, I have made PDFs of the chapters in this, so you can get through the course without having a physical copy of it. I would recommend that you have the physical copy uh, because it's, it's a very, very good uh, uh, text, but it's not required. Um, so those are uh, introductory um, texts. Um, I'd also um, recommend, but I'm not requiring, uh, a book which came out um, uh, two years ago by Kevin Don and Ivor Newman, Understanding Discourse Analysis for Social Research. This is really quite introductory um, and it is useful to have in your library if you plan to apply discourse analysis. We'll be reading some chapters in it but it is not central to the course, and the course was put together before this text was uh, published. Um, but it is, it, it is something that is uh, recommended. Um, now, there's also a book that I used for quite a number of years, uh, but I'm not requiring that you purchase it, so it's another in the recommended category, and that's this book here by Margaret Weatherall and her colleagues. Um, uh, she's a social psychologist. Uh, she was at the Open University. She's now uh, in New Zealand as a professor. Um, and it's Discourse Theory and Practice, which came out in 2004. So it's an edited collection. Uh, we're only going to be reading some of this. It's a useful thing to have uh, in your library. It is um, the sort of key chapters that I'm assigning will also be available as, as PDFs uh, in this course, uh, uh, the closed um, unit of this course. So these are not available uh, on the internet writ large and then you should not make them available uh, because uh, this is for this course only. Um, so the other, um, those are sort of, Kind of foundational uh, texts. Um, then the other uh, books which are required are books which um, address um, more substantive area um, and uh, substantive areas like the question concerning geopolitical narratives, the module concerning geopolitical narratives, which is the third module. So I, I am assigning this particular book. I, by um, Miss Kim Mon, uh, O'Loughlin and Roselle, which is called Strategic Narratives. Uh, also Ronald Krebs book. Um, and then I will provide you with some essays from the introduction to uh, the early geopolitics literature. So this is a, a geopolitics reader, uh, which uh, is um, uh, a key text in early uh, critical geopolitics, but uh, you're not required to uh, buy that text by any means, but I'm just making it available for you so you can see it and you see that the, the particular PDFs that are provided in that module are uh, from that uh, early critical geopolitics moment uh, from the um, 90s and uh, 2000s, early 2000s. 
Um, and then the other uh, book that is listed, two other books that are listed there, well, uh, one is by Margaret Weatherall, Affect and Emotion, A New Social Science Understanding. It was published uh, in 2012. This is a challenging book, but it's a terrific book. But you're going to struggle with this book because it really uh, summarizes a vast literature. Uh, and so it may be new to you, but it's really worth the effort because it will help you conceptualize a discourse and affect, meaning emotion, uh, um, embodied emotion in a, in a new way. Uh, so it's terrific. Uh, Cass Moodle's uh, and Kalt Wasser's book, Populism, a very short introduction. I don't have the uh, text of that here, but I am uh, assigning that also. Uh, and then there will be, there's another module which is made up of PDFs, including something from this book. Again, not required but uh, just flagging it for you. This is a book by Valerie Sperling called Sex, Politics and Putin, Political Legitimacy in Russia. So um, let me talk a little bit about how the grades will be determined in the class. So five modules, five written assignments, each 20% of your grade. Uh, like I mentioned, the, uh, the word limit is a strict one. Um, and uh, what that means is that there's no participation grade in the class. I will make available a discussion feature in Canvas, which you can use uh, to discuss the readings with your fellow students. But that is not required. What is required is this writing. Uh, so it's a writing intensive class and that's where the emphasis is. So you should uh, put all of your uh, effort into writing as good an assignment as you possibly can. And then taking on board that precious feedback on your work um, so that you can uh, apply that next time. Now, the different modules. So there's a, a module um, uh, which is called Foundational Thinkers and Traditions. And one of the experiences you're going to have at this course at the outset is you're going to be uh, perhaps um, overwhelmed by the amount of um, online lectures which are available to you on different aspects of um, discourse analysis and the history of discourse analysis and different uh, thinkers and uh, and approaches. Um, what I would say to you is you should stick with it. Um, this is a, um, a foundational module which will provide you with uh, a tour of the horizon, so to speak. Uh, I'm trying to do a multiplicity of different things in this class and so inevitably uh, we have to um, cover things uh, as in as great a depth as we can, uh, but co cover a multiplicity of different approaches. If you're struggling with the details of uh, Derrida's post-structuralism, do not sweat it. Uh, similarly with Saussure's, the, some of the details of Saussure's, again, don't sweat it. Keep your eyes on the larger picture um, and uh, keep that in mind. Uh, Foucault's work, um, um, re could require a module on its own, could be a whole course on its own. We're, we need to cover it here, but we also need to move on because there's so much that is very, very interesting and important uh, in this uh, particular um, domain uh, with all of these different sets of literatures. Uh, one of my jobs is to provide, give you familiarity with some key figures. This is an introduction after all. And then after that, you will uh, have to, uh, you will have the ability to follow up and deepen your knowledge by uh, working in other um, courses with these thinkers. What I've done uh, since each module is uh, uh, three weeks, is I've indicated to you roughly the reading you should be doing per week. So the readings in week one, readings in week two, and readings in week three here indicated as well as the, the due date of the first assignment. 
The second assignment deals with the Marxist tradition. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm combining uh, a introduction to this very important tradition within discourse analysis, which has influenced a lot of contemporary thinking um, with actually sub something substantive, which is the, the discourse of populism and understanding the discourse of populism. So that's why I'm assigning it for the third week, this short introduction to populism, because what populism is, it's a particular discourse. It's a discourse about the elites that, that politics is divided into a, a binary between the elites and the people. Uh, and uh, it is promoted by a political party or usually by a strong man who is saying that they represent the people against the elites, the establishment, the deep state and whatnot. So you need to understand the uh, background uh, to populism. And one of the ways in which I have uh, in putting this together, I've thought about it is that the the post Marxism of uh, Ernesto Leclau and Chantal Mouffe publishing a book like this here, a very influential book, Hegemony and Socialist Strategy. Uh, that's influenced by uh, Leclau's experience with Peronism in uh, Argentina. He's a, a Argentinian. He's he's now uh, passed away, um, but he was an Artini, uh, Argentinian Marxist thinker who was grappling with uh, Peronism and also with the populist politics uh, in Latin America, which was also associated with right wing authoritarian governments. Uh, and so how that worked uh, and he's building upon and uh, also Chantal Mouffe, who's still alive, uh, a French uh, a social theorist, um, they are building upon the Marxist tradition, particularly the works of Antonio Gramsci, who was a person who was locked up by Mussolini uh, and whose prison notebooks really outline the idea of cultural hegemony. Um, so that's an important um, um, tradition for you to uh, understand and appreciate. It's something that goes way beyond Marxism today. It's very influential in social science writ large. Uh, and so I want you to, uh, to grasp that whole history. Um, and also begin to transition in this second module towards looking at how this can be applied to uh, contemporary uh, politics. The third module deals with geopolitical narrative analysis, uh, and I've divided this into a discussion of uh, early critical geopolitics, then uh, the uh, which comes out of political geography uh, and is associated in bit with international relations. Then the strategic narratives uh, approach, which is associated with uh, communication studies uh, and uh, the study of public diplomacy. And then a narrative and national security, a uh, more mainline uh, international relations and how international relations has tried to uh, take on a discourse and look at how narrative uh, shapes how we think about and frame and understand national security. So you're going to be exposed to three different works. Uh, 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 three different approaches and three different utilizations of narrative in the analysis of, of geopolitics. Um, so this is where you are uh, looking at the application of a, a, dis a form of discourse analysis which focuses on narrative to substantive um, challenges in international affairs. Um, the fourth module deals with gender. Uh, and gendered practices and images um, and uh, outlines for you theoretical foundations on this as well as uh, some literature on the US case and then the Russian case. Um, this is extremely important that uh, we engage with gender and the gendered nature of discursive practices and imaging um, because it's so central to the actual practice of international affairs today. Uh, and uh, of course, it's something that is now manifest in our politics, uh, just the reaction to the Trump-Putin uh, Helsinki summit uh, uh, a few weeks ago uh, is indicative of how these things are now essentially contested uh, and how the feminist 
thinkers, uh, feminist discourse analysis has been very powerful in providing us with tools to understand the ways in which uh, contemporary um, uh, international affairs is, is practiced. Um, the last uh, module deals with affect and emotion and makes distinctions between those two. It builds upon the uh, emphasis on the embodied in the fourth module that uh, feminist theorists have. Uh, that's their sort of signal contribution to discourse analysis. And then this looks at the ways in which then this, this is being utilized to understand the force of habit in international affairs, the uh, appeal to emotions, uh, the coupling of the emotional and the affective, um, which in part, uh, the emotional, the affective and the discursive in ways that then generate uh, a culture which is about performance rather than about truth. So those of you who are concerned about the erosion of democracy, the erosion of science, of fact-based uh, analysis, we need to, uh, in order to, to understand that, we need to understand what is going on in terms of the discursive performances, which are about appeals to emotion, not appeals to reason, not appeals to uh, facticity. Uh, the very idea that facts are the enemy of truth, uh, this idea of truthiness, which is things that feel true, that should be true, um, that that dominates our, our culture right now, or at least is something that is coming out of the White House. Uh, that is the, the sort of the moment that we need to understand. And there are tools uh, in social science to help us uh, to grasp that. And of course, it's not just a, a, a US a phenomenon alone. So that is a overview of the different uh, modules in the course. Um, what I would say to you, is, uh, you should read the, the syllabus pretty clearly, uh, pretty carefully. Um, this has been refined over the years and so I have this down to a pretty uh, kind of tight uh, organizational uh, structure. Um, and um, this can help you, this course can really help you with your writing, but you need to grasp at the outset uh, what type of writing uh, is required here uh, in the class. And if uh, um, you need to take on board the um, the feedback that you get from the from the outset. Talk to uh, students who have taken the class in the past. Now this class I change it every year, so the uh, assignments are, are going to be uh, different. Uh, but um, that would help you uh, get a sense of what really is involved in the class. Um, overall, I uh, think that there will be uh, a lot that will interest you in this class. Uh, there's a lot of intellectual power uh, in reading these particular literatures. Um, and uh, there's also a lot of uh, value in having someone read five of your assignments, um, written work, and getting feedback on that so that you help uh, you improve your conceptualization, you improve your organization and the way you write. So um, I, let me leave it at that and I, I wish you the very best for this course in the fall of 2018. Thank you.